All right, Broski, I'm back with a new video. It's on Dr. James Mann, our favorite <laughs> steroid guy. He's got a cool channel. What's getting big now? 13,000. Wow. <laughs> it's popular. Fake is very popular in this world, I tell you. HCG injection for men on TRT. That's why I try to tell you. That's the reason why I was going to get rid of my old channel because real doesn't work. Nobody wants to do anything real anymore. You understand me? They want to fake it. So, ACG injection for men on TRT, car reconstitute, dose benefits. Well, let's see what he says here. It's interesting. You're on testosterone. You should have a sex drive through the roof. It's all good because today I'm going to sort this all out. You should. You should. It should be through the roof. I got nothing against HCG. It's called human chronic gonotropin for a reason because it's a human hormone. It isn't artificial. A honeymoon period of being on testosterone is over and your libido is not what it used to be. I don't feel so good. So you've turned your attentions to HCG. How do we mix it correctly? The question is, is, can you build fake muscles on HCG? Yes. Can you build real muscles taking HCG? Yes. If you do it natural and you use HCG, you can build real muscles. Now, if you do it fakely, you can build fake muscles on HCG as well. If you do it fake... Ah, uh, you're probably wondering, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Let's address that right now and keep the wife happy. Start off with washing your hands with soap for 20 seconds. Then we line up all our materials. You'll need an alcohol wipe, your back water, the HCG vial. Wow, this guy is really thorough. <laughs> He's interesting. Well, a tissue, your reconstitution one mil syringe with a 21 gauge and a 25 gauge plus an insulin syringe. Time to use those muscles. Get a tissue, put it on top of the back water, snap it off, and now you've got access to the water. Remove the cap from the HCG top. Use an alcohol wipe to sterilize the top of the vial. Add oh, very thorough. The cleanliness is important, definitely. The green 25 gauge needle to your syringe. Needle goes into the backwater. We draw it out slowly. Typically, HCG comes in 5,000 IU vials, which means one mil of backwater is going to give you 5,000 international units. What's that in English, Dr. James? 250 IUs per five units, or five. I'd say these come in 5,000 international units. The Chariomon, they're everywhere now. You can buy them in Mexico, right? So I'm not against, I'm not against certain, certain uh, drugs that they sell, <laughs> sell over the counter, even in Mexico. So HCG, yeah, what is it? It's a human chronic gonotropin. It's a gonotropin from, the, it's released through pituitary when women are pregnant. They extract it from pregnant women's urine. It's a very powerful molecule. It's to protect the fetus and to develop the fetus so what is it a lot more powerful than human human growth hormone well yes because the human growth hormone the one that you're getting from the pharmacy is is artificial and uh, human chronic gonotropin has more uh, peptides so yeah it boosts your collagen production sky high and everything so yeah they could they think they call it a they call it a youth drug it's actually a youth hormone much better than human uh, than um, HGH. Much better. Much more powerful. Much better. Yeah. Five hundred I use per. T there, it's your body sees it as its own its own hormone, so it's not gonna cut off any of your own hormones in your body. There's no side effects. There's nothing basically with it. Yeah, that's the good thing about HCG. Now, can you use it to build fake muscles? Well, yeah, glycogen muscles. Can you use it to build real muscles? Yeah, you can. But again. <laughs> protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to build muscle see if muscle is going to gain mass protein synthesis must exceed protein breakdown and this weightlifting is a is a signal for protein synthesis and a protein and a protein breakdown so what do you need to do protein synthesis still needs to exceed that breakdown for that hormone to work otherwise it ain't going to work it's you still need to build muscle in the natural world otherwise it's not going to work bro i'm just i'm just telling you it's not going to work no hormone could build a real muscle but it can build fake muscles if you glycogen load your herbivore diet use per 10 units 
This is a step a lot of people forget. Put one mil of air into the HCG vial. This depressurizes the vial, and when you draw out the HCG, it doesn't spray everywhere. Swap the 21 gauge green for the 25 gauge orange. With your water-filled syringe, pierce the stopper. Slowly push the backwater down the side of the vial. It must be down the side, as you can see, at an angle. This medicine is very precious. If you inject direct... Very precious. You don't want that, that molecule to die. ...directly onto the powder, you could destroy it. We are nearly there. Remove... Okay, he's doing this for after cycle. You go on this testosterone, whatever. You want to blow up your balls again. They never come back to normal. Once they've... Once the side effect has taken effect, taking testosterone has shrunk your balls. That'll just blow up the sack. Um... It's not going to blow up the balls. They're not going to come back to normal. These things are not reversible after over time, a certain period of time. So you've caused irreparable damage to your body and a bunch of other things. So HCG is not going to fix that. <laughs> but he's using it to try to bounce back his testosterone because it's flatlined. Get it? It's on life support because, well, it's, it's, um, your body see, saw it as something artificial. So it shut down its own production. <laughs> yeah. For quite a while, actually. So you're trying to bounce it back. Move the needle, roll the HCG in your fingertips. Do not shake it, you'll destroy it, and then let it settle for five minutes. After you reconstituted it, put it in the fridge. Because once mixed, it can lose its potency within two weeks. I recommend you source 1,500 international unit vials. These are generally... They usually come 5,000. You could get 10,000 international units, but they come 5,000, and I believe that 2,500 is, like, sufficient per week. It's sufficient. The dose is sufficient. Why spend more money on it? In Mexico, I believe they go for, uh, I don't know, I think 1,000 pesos or something. I can't remember now exactly. You, you, yeah, they're, they're quite expensive, man. So that's, like... $50 for 5,000 international units. So if you split it, it's $25 per 2,500. So yeah, you take half a cc per week. That should be sufficient. Used up in two weeks. I have the 5,000 I use. And, and even that's quite a high dosage because in the old days, I think it was Gonacore. They used to sell this product called Gonacore HCG and it would be, I think it was like, I can't remember exactly, but it would come out to 250 international units per, per cc and the B12 was mixed in it. Vials, so I keep mine in the freezer to make sure it's got extra freshness. Yeah, th those were 10 cc, 10 cc bottles. They're, they were quite cheap actually and it was sufficient enough to get what you wanted. Now, of course, these ones, the dosages are higher. I don't know if it's, you know, it depends on the potency of it, right? I don't know. When it's time to inject, I take it out of the freezer, I allow it to thaw for five minutes yes, before injecting my desired dosage. Dosages are different for everyone. A good place to start is 250 IU. This is Dr. James. Dr. James is, in, is a doctor. See, I told you, 250 international units per week. That's really what you only need. But the problem with this vial is it comes with 5,000. <laughs> How are you going to split it to 250? Take a fraction of it? Every other day per week. See how you feel on that dose, then right. potentially bump it up to five. Oh, he says every other day. I, I don't know about that. 500? Oh, okay. 100 every other day. Try and find your lowest effective dosage of HCG. Otherwise, you'll need an overhaul of your entire estrogen management protocol. Testosterone is higher in the day and lower at night because it has a circadian rhythm. So we want to recreate this. Don't be injecting HCG late at night. It's not ideal. Do it in the morning. People take HCG, but the T or cycle test, your balls will fall asleep. We need to use HCG to wake those balls up again. We must have that estrogen in the right range before we raise the androgen. <laughs> you won't sleep yet. Your balls are never going to come back once they've been destroyed by just big testosterone. From HCG's high affinity and binding capacity to the androgen receptor, I notice a big, big difference in limb. Here's the thing. Muscles, one guy was t talking to me, says, hey, T, um, when muscles, the muscles, they get, they, 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 how do you know? You're just getting a repair. If you're getting a repair, you're getting scar tissue formation, but it's a micro injury, right? So how, what do micro injuries look like? They're under a microscope, so they're small. You can't see them. 
So what are you really getting there when you're just, let's just say you're getting a repair of a muscle. So, cause some guys say, well, I'm getting a repair. Well, you're getting structural, you're getting more structural tissue. So those, those injuries that took place in the fibers you were lifting, say, I got some muscle damage or whatever. I got these injuries, these micro injuries, micro tears in my muscle. Well, they fill up the cracks in the domes. They're the cracks. They fill up with tissue. There's more structural integrity there. So now the muscle is stronger. Do you understand what that means? Stronger is not susceptible to getting damaged. Th those muscles, now that they've repaired, they're so strong. You're going to have to go after the weaker muscles. So what do you do? Well, most people try to lift heavier eventually with the time. It's, it's really complicated. I have to do a big video on this, man. The whole myositic energy receptor controls the strength, but not the mass of the limb muscles, controls mass, well, protein synthesis, and that needs to exceed that breakdown, boom. And then it, when you're in an anabolic state, nitrogen balance is even, well, then the, the catabolic hormone is converted to an androgen, so it doesn't have to compete with the myositic androgen receptor. Now, using this type of growth hormone, HCG, what will that do? Well, it's a youth drug, and it? That can reverse some aging, too. His drug it could do a bunch of things but you know your doctor won't give it to you because he knows cosmetic purposes <laughs> so here's the thing it is a very powerful catalyst definitely especially if you were to do it natural you could implement this as a protocol in your regime but like i said man bodybuilding is very specific still that protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to build that muscle whether you're taking drug or not now, if it's glycogen, then you're just going to draw glycogen in. And there are most people's diets are filled with these herbivore glycogen diets. And I can prove it too, man. So yeah, when people tell me hyperplasia doesn't exist, it does exist. If you're getting tissue between the cracks and the domes just to repair, then you're getting it. But how do you get it to give you an extra fiber? I told you before in a video, I said, it has to be, the body has to be overwhelmed. Do you understand me? And all in one shot. It has to be traumatized in one shot to give you more fibers because it sees this as I'm dying. <laughs> so I need to give you more fibers, not just repair, but remodel new stuff. No, the remodeling part is definitely the fiber repair, but to get a new track, a new, my a new myo tube and more of these nuclei that has to go through a traumatic event and it can't be one body part. And then again, you still have to get over the mild, <laughs> you have to get over the repeated body effect phenomena where it's protecting muscle from any more damage. These are all the things you need to know in bodybuilding. They're complex, bro, get it? Only somebody who actually really been in the field could tell you these things. I have friends that took steroids, HEG, all this kind of shit. I, I studied it thoroughly. I understand how all these stupid things work. See what I mean? Like I said, but it was on my old channel. I explained a lot of it, but I'm not doing it. I'm a new channel. Now me, I simply am just making videos now for entertainment purposes only. You understand me? This isn't for educational purposes. I think people think it's educational. It's not. It's entertainment, this channel now. That's all it really is. Bido and sensitivity when I'm getting busy. It's one hell of a drug. <laughs> If you are struggling with Limbido, you can add a DHT like Proviron. This does not need to be 5-alpha reduced. It already comes packaged as a DHT and goes straight in to bind with the androgen receptor. They're very effective at lowering SHBG. Therefore, guys notice a very, very good increase in their Limbido in the first 2-3 weeks. After that, because the SHBG has been tanked, they notice a decrease in the Limbido. Then they don't know what to do. Mission abort. Personally, I do not use Proviron for that reason. When I'm in my cruise TRT phase, I use DHEA, HCG, pregnenolone, DIM, calcium D-glucarate, selenium. But on cycle... Oh, this guy goes all out. See, he's cosmetic, man. He does it for cosmetic purposes. So he looks cool, this, that, you know. That kind of stuff. Oh, I use Mastron as my DHT over Proviron because it's... But the problem is he looks so... The point is you look so unnatural, people know it's fake now. And they kind of don't see it like you were like, oh, man, this guy's kind of like, come on, man. You know what I mean? They don't kind of respect you too much. It's a stronger compound, far more bioavailable than Proviron, and pharmacokinetically superior. And overall, it's going to outpace and outlast Proviron with its effects. Bam! Oh, bop! Bop, 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 b
downside is it makes your hairline run down to your ears. But that's going to be genetic anyway. If you're going to lose it, you're going to lose it. Look at your mother's side of the family for clues with hair loss. If you're concerned before... Not necessarily. It's diet, estrogen, and things like this. They're going to make you lose your hair. And these toxins in this food that we're eating today makes your hair fall out. For your cycle, add in a DHT test to your baseline of biomarkers and then monitor. I've seen people when they return, vegans or whoever, some, a lot of people, they return on a, her, on a carnivore diet and their hair returns. It's restored, but it takes a while. It throughout your cycle. HCG plays a role in signaling the thyroid to grow. So a low dose of levothyroxine T4 might be needed. The goal is to... I don't know. That's a possibility. A good signal to make the thyroid grow, but I really doubt it. Maintain your TSH with... And it sees this hormone as being your own hormone because it's a human growth. It's a human uh, type of growth hormone. It's a human chronic gonotropin. In the normal limits. The dosage of your T4 wants to be increased if your levels of TSH are above normal and should be decreased if your TSH levels fall below the normal range. But be careful on this. You don't want to mess... Scade. That includes androstenedione, pregnenolone, DHEA, and progesterone, plus more. These other hormones are going to play a big role in other functions of your body. And the testosterone will cause suppression of these signaling mechanisms, leading to loss of libido. So injecting testosterone and doing other gear is only a small piece of the puzzle. If you want well-being and an excellent sex drive, we have to consider all the other hormones that are interplaying with everything else. If you don't do that, you're asking for trouble. If you need help and guidance... I would agree with him, man. <laughs> ...it's on your cycle to get that physique, but not to suffer the curse. Again, people are going to do these drugs regardless whether you tell them not to do things or not. People are going to go, listen, where I lived, <laughs> marijuana, uh, uh, where marijuana stores are showing up everywhere, on every corner block, and people are lining up to smoke marijuana. So what is the difference between somebody taking a steroid, smoking marijuana? I don't, I don't do drugs. And I don't, I don't, I don't drink alcohol. To tell you the truth, very seldom. And so these these stores are everywhere. They're available because that's the world we live in. Here's the thing: if you're against capitalism, if you're against steroids being available, with people using them, then you would be against against everything else. And you should be against the liquor store. You should be against marijuana stores. Everything that they're selling out there, the fake food, every single thing. And then when you narrow it down, there's nothing left. See what I mean? It's just a business. But like I said, nobody's forcing anybody to take any of these things. If they want to take it, so you all want democracy in a free country and free this and freedom. Like pioneers of freedom, like Do Dr. Dr. Tony Huge. <laughs> Get it? So you got this guy, Dr. James. They're just exercising their freedoms. That's all. Freedom of speech, freedom to, um, I don't know, do whatever the hell they want to do to their body. It's their own business. I'm just doing this for educational purposes and some entertainment purposes. Let's watch this other video. Some drugs, when you are into your sense of well-being which steroids are for cutting generally the long mostly anabolic on its own without any testosterone the issue then becomes too many anabolics and that's going to water down the androgens that are inside your body or the lack of them therefore a primo anavar winstrel cycle is going to have your body looking hard However, you will not be hard in the bedroom. Testosterone is required for anyone that's doing a cutting phase at any level of body fat, really, because it ties into your sense of well-being. Which steroids are for cutting? Generally, the longer esters are better for muscle gaining phases and the shorter esters are used in cutting phases. However, I've said it one million times. They build muscle. They don't burn fat. And no, they don't build muscle, but they'll build your fake muscles because, hold on a second, let's go back here somewhere. Let's see what he says. Fake compounds give you strength, aggression, sex drive, and help you store glycogen in your muscles. Taking there you go. So testosterone gives you aggression, strength, and stores glycogen in your muscle. This is what I'm trying to explain to you people. You are gaining fake muscles. The only way that you could build muscle on steroids, and you have to do it still naturally, is protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown. If it is not exceeding that breakdown, you are not building real meat, real muscles. Now, it doesn't work on herbivore diets. 
No herbivore protein is going to work and build a muscle. You're made up of animal proteins. So you need animal protein, meat, nutrients to build real muscle. And you still have to exceed that breakdown. I don't care if you're a cheap bastard and you're like, no, nah, man, I can't afford this and I can't eat that much protein. Protein, I can't do that. But I could eat a lot of carbohydrates though and do shit garbage like rice and all this garbage crap and cookies and whatever and pastas and weird shit. And then, oh, and claim that it's real muscle. You can't claim that that's real muscle. You can use this as a catalyst. But remember, it's artificial. Do you understand how things work? People will say, well, it does. It, there's, uh, it really works. No, 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 no. Even in the hospital when they use steroids. Let's say you had a big scar or a cut or something. You need it for a healing process. The healing process, it's just a catalyst to push some other things to make it go. Get it to get it to heal faster, but it itself does not heal that the steroids get it, bro <laughs> You understand me? There's more processes going on to build muscle in your body. You forgot about stem cells and all that they build muscles Yeah, stem cells. So a molecule itself is just part of the process now Food is what's going to build that muscle without that protein synthesis exceeding that breakdown You are never going to build a real muscle. I'm talking about real muscle. Look Again, this is NCBI, you can read it here. If muscle is going to build mass, protein synthesis must exceed that breakdown. It must exceed. And even if you have a, even if you have a micro injury in that fiber, it still needs to exceed. Otherwise, I'm telling you, man, you're, you're gonna get an apoptosis in the muscle and it'll be gone, disappear. You're actually losing muscle fibers now. You're on testosterone. So, like I said, man, I'm gonna go. I'll see you in the next one. Tell me what you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel, broski. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, my friends.